Welcome to this month's webinar with Adespresso. My name is Aaron Zakowski, and I'm super honored and uh, excited to be able to host this webinar uh, together with Adespresso today. Uh, today's topic is going to be covering uh, six evergreen marketing principles for creating high converting Facebook ads in 2020 and beyond. So uh, there we have, that's the uh, title we have for this week's webinar, six evergreen marketing principles. Um, and before we get started, just a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Aaron Zakowski. I'm the CEO and founder of Zamo Digital Marketing. We are a Facebook ads agency, uh, primarily working with B2B SaaS clients, SaaS being software as a service, uh, but also helping a bunch of e-commerce and lead gen clients and things like that. Uh, we've managed millions of dollars in ad spend over the years, um, mostly with large uh, tech software companies like Envision, DigitalOcean, Agora Pulse, and many, many others. Um, I've been doing Facebook ads since uh, pretty much the beginning, uh, 2010, 2011, right around then when they were, were first launching, and uh, I've been enjoying helping clients to grow their businesses with it ever since. So in terms of the agenda for today's show, uh, for today's presentation, uh, we're going to be talking about why good marketing matters. Um, from there, we're going to go on to my A3C framework for Facebook ads, uh, and we'll understand the 10 reasons why people buy. Um, next, the ad arsenal. So nine ad types that sorry ad types that will help you sell any product or service, and then from there we're going to go into some testing ad principles in terms of uh, the the processes, a little bit of, of what we use within our agency for testing ads to find winners. So uh, that's the plan, and let's get into it. All right. So why good marketing matters. So first and foremost, it's really important that you have a, a product or service that people want. We generally refer to that as as product market fit. Um, you can't uh, sell ice to an Eskimo, you know, kind of as the saying goes. You got to have something that's going to help people out and that they're going to want. Um, and then the marketing is what delivers the message to your potential customers, explaining why they should actually want to buy this product and helping them to understand on either emotional or intellectual level of why this is going to help them out. Now, the platforms that we advertise on, be it Facebook ads, magazine ads, TV commercials, billboards, etc., uh, are only the vehicle for delivering that marketing message. Uh, marketing platforms come and go. Um, we could see, you know, a couple of generations ago, you know, you know, it used to be most things were print and then things kind of became TV and radio ads were kind of where most advertising and marketing dollars were going. And we've seen the, in the last, you know, 10, 20 years that a huge percentage of companies' marketing dollars have moved towards online marketing platforms such as Facebook ads. So these platforms and vehicles might change, but actual good marketing is, uh, is always going to be around. And so these principles are things that you should having your arsenal, having your skill set, because even as things change, you know, there will come a day when Facebook ads won't be such a hot marketing platform. Uh, might still be a long time, but the day will come certainly and we'll have the next big thing. Um, but the marketing thing, uh, skills that we're going to be talking about today are going to be with you even then. So in terms of Facebook ads, though, I generally think of things within this A3C framework, which is attention, curiosity, click, and conversion. So think about it as you're scrolling through your Facebook feed, um, and what's going to grab your attention. So the image is usually the first thing you're going to notice. Um, so the job of our image is to grab attention and stop the scroll. It's probably the most important thing actually that happens because there's so much that's being ignored as people mindlessly scroll through their Facebook feeds. So the image is going to grab your attention and then hopefully the copy that you've written, that being the, the, the text uh, above the image as well as the headline, everything below the image, have to get the curiosity of the the viewer up to the point where they're thinking, hey, there's something here that I want to learn more about. This might be able to be able to help me um, and then ultimately generate the click. Now, if they click, they're going to land on your web page or your landing page, your home page, whatever that might be. Um, and ultimately, it's the job of that website to to get them to convert. Um, the Facebook ad can only take them so far. Hopefully, it can kind of pre-sell a little bit um, in terms of getting curiosity, pre-selling them, getting them interested in what's to come. But ultimately, your website is, in most cases, what's going to actually be getting the conversion. So. Moving on to the 10 reasons why people buy. And these are kind of universal. I, I'm pretty sure they would cross um, cultures as well. Um, I actually took this from the book Copywriting Secrets from Jim Edwards, uh, sourced down there below in the slide. Um, and it really resonated with me in terms of why are the reasons why people might be interested in buying your product or service. So the first one would be they want to make more money. Your product is going to help them to make more money. Um, on the flip side of that is that your product might help them save money. Um, people also want a product that can help them to save time, to avoid effort, escape mental or physical pain, uh, to help them get more comfortable, um, to achieve greater cleanliness or hygiene to attain better health. That might be like a, a weight loss or a fitness offer we might think about. Um, it can help them to gain praise or to feel more loved. 
and increase their popularity or social status. Those are all things that are, are human needs to accomplish all these things. And if you have a product or service that can help your customer achieve those goals, well then that's something that people would wanna buy. Now, the tools that we're gonna to use to try and deliver our messages of, of why people should buy, or we like to call our, our, our ad arsenal, the nine powerful ad types for any niche. Now, these are truly types of ads and approaches to ads that can be used, um, I believe, across any service, any product. Uh, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, be creative, think about these things as we go through them and how you can apply them to your business. Uh, we'll see over the remaining slides of most of this presentation that we're gonna be going and analyzing different, um, different examples of ads that I pulled out of my swipe file or that we pulled out of accounts that my agencies actually run for our clients and, and uh, how we can learn from them and apply the lessons within them to, to your ads that you run, whether you're in another agency, whether you're promoting your own business or anything else. So these are the nine ad types that we're gonna be learning about today. We're gonna to be learning about awards and recognition, benefits and features, frequently asked questions or FAQs, uh, testimonials, competitor comparisons, numbers and stats, recognizable logos, product demos, uh, and before and after um, explanations. So these are all ads that can be applied to, to almost any product that you might be advertising, and we're gonna see some examples now. So first, we're gonna get into awards and recognitions. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of disclaimer. Most of my clients tend to be in software companies, so you're gonna see things a little bit weighted towards uh, those types of ads, because that's just what we do. Um, but I'm, I've tried to pull in some different ones for services and e-commerce products and, and things like that. So there'll be something here for everybody. So the first ad we're gonna look at is for a company brand folder. This is a client of ours, and we actually created this ad within our agency. So here we're using these awards that the company got from G2, which is a, a software comparison website. And uh, we're highlighting the fact that they were a leader across enterprise, mid-market, and small businesses. So that, cr that creates a lot of validity to their product and, and proof that yes, they are in fact a, um, a solid business with a great product and their target audience would recognize that G2 crowd emblem and think, okay, this is something legit that, that, that we might want to consider. Um, so it creates a, a lot of um, legitimacy to the, to the offer. Um, and then in addition, we've used the, the bullet points up above to kind of highlight some of the other benefits and, and features that, uh, that go along with it. Now the next ad we have here is from Calm App. Uh, also highlighting their awards and recognitions. So what actually is interesting here is they've used the image to grab the attention, as we spoke about before, that four steps to ease anxiety. I think this is a super creative ad image over here. But if someone is struggling with anxiety or trying to get more calm, that image is going to get them to stop, pay attention, hopefully read those four things that are going on over there. And then if that really does interest them, then they'll notice the copy up above, which is what I want to highlight here, is the highlighting of 2018 trend of the year from Apple, 2017 iPhone Apple of the year from Apple. Um, those are awards and recognitions that people are gonna see and, and recognize that this is a quality product um, and definitely will give it more consideration at that point. Now let's get into some examples of benefits and features. So again, here's an ad that we ran a while back for, for one of our clients. And, and this is actually a format, if you look at the copy in this ad, that uh, we really like to run for a lot of our clients where we use a, uh, a one sentence description of what the product does. And then we, we explain the offer. In this case, it's, you know, get a free trial. Here's the link. And then bullet pointing out some of the benefits and features of why somebody would really want to use this. And then reiterate, reiterating the offer again after that. Now, there's a lot of benefits and features and things within this ad that you can notice. So we're talking about the 21 day free trial. Uh, we highlighted some of the, the product features within the bullet points over there, the checkpoints. Uh, the fact that no credit card is required, there's a money back guarantee. All these things are highlighted within here and those are all things that would help people to be more interested within this offer. Um, and the point of the image here is just simply just to grab somebody's attention. Um, clearly this is a slightly older ad because that ad format is uh, really not uh, accessible anymore. Now another benefit and feature ad that we have here is from Clearbit. Um, Clearbit's a software company that helps people with uh, data within the business world. Um, and I actually really love the way they use bullet points here in order to, to highlight and communicate their benefits and features. So they actually, to me, it's actually really interesting how they don't put any full sentences over here. It's just bullet points. And I love the fact that they've added emojis onto each of those to kind of make it a little bit more stimulating and engaging and interesting to be able to pay attention. Um, but super simple, highlight what, what the advantages, the benefits, features of your ad, and uh, that's kind of everything that people really wanna know. So it's a great way to communicate. Now getting into FAQs. So 
This is actually a pretty long one right here. So this is an ad that we ran for a client. Um, and this product uh, that we were promoting um, had a lot of objections and concerns that people had within the marketplace that we started to notice. And we realized that most of the questions people were leaving for us in, in the ad copy, in, in, in the first iterations of ads that we were doing within the comments, um, all those questions they were asking us were kind of answered within the website's Q, um, FAQ section. So we actually copied a lot of that into a longer form copy section here. And it actually started working really well. Most of people's you know, questions about the product were answered. And uh, the ads did really well with this copy after that. Um, it's a great way to kind of pre-sell people so that if they've, they've seen your ad, they're interested, they're curious, they can read within the ad itself kind of and discover everything they need to know about the offer. And uh, they're a little bit pre-sold. You know, they might not click if they've determined already it's not for them. But if someone's interested, they know a lot and your conversion rates on those clicks are probably going to be pretty high. So uh, this is definitely something you could try out. And uh, no, you don't need to make it this long uh, if you're going to try this out for yourself. Um, now let's go into some testimonial ads, uh, something probably a lot of you are already relatively familiar with. So this is an Instagram ad that I really liked from, from Furnish. Um, and you can see how they're using testimonials to address people's concerns and objectives, objections rather, sorry. And uh, one of the concerns I guess this company might have, they're renting furniture to people, is you know beautiful offerings and, and low commitment. So the quote is addressing things that people might be wondering about if they're thinking about using this product. Um, I also like within this ad how they're using people. This looks like it's a real person. This does not look like stock photography to me, although you never know, could be. Um, in general, if I'm showing people, I want to see faces. I want to see interesting faces of, of smiling, happy people whose eyes are looking at the user. Um, those tend to work really well and definitely something you know I would recommend testing within your ads. Now, the next example we have here is from Intercom, a company probably many of you are, are familiar with in terms of the, the messaging app that we see on businesses. Um, but what I want to highlight here is how they got testimonials from, from influential people or recognizable customers. So InVision's a big company that would be recognizable to many of the potential customers that Intercom wants to work with. So by using a quote from an influential person or company in this case, um, that lends a lot of credibility to the, the product and the offer. Um, and then in addition, they're using a testimonial that, that helps prospects to imagine life with one of the major problems being solved. In this case, being able to talk with uh, multiple customers uh, as if you had only one. Here's another one um, that I really like, and it's actually interesting. Um, influencers. So we, we touched on that a little bit in the previous ad um, in terms of influential companies. But you know, within the marketing world, we all know who, who Neil Patel is. Um, and what's interesting about this ad is there isn't actually a testimonial from him but rather the company is making the claim that their product is Neil Patel's top choice for CRM. Um, presumably that's true because I, I can't imagine that they would uh, make a claim like that without his permission. And the fact that he's here, I think would make anybody think that, well, if this is good enough for Neil Patel, then it's probably good enough for, for me too. And I should definitely pay attention if I'm in the market for uh, some a new, a new uh, CRM product like this. So definitely something to think about having uh, influencers within your industry to be um, present on your ads. Uh, so now we're going to get into the next category of ads, which is competitor comparisons. So this ad from MailerLite, um, I wouldn't know what they were, to be honest, right away. But just by seeing this image where they're comparing their product with MailChimp, which is a, a logo that I recognize, um, I immediately know, oh, okay, so this must be an email company that's a competitor of MailChimp. Um, so it grabs my attention quickly because it's a recognizable logo. Um, and it also, that logo communicates to me very quickly that I know what this offer is about. Um, what I also like about this ad is the fact that it, it's pretty easy to design. I think anybody can figure out a way to make this type of ad pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and it just does a great job of comparing. I like how when you're making that kind of comparison with a larger competitor, um, they're actually linking here to, to a comparative page that's going to com compare their product with the product of, of MailChimp. And you can see the pros and cons between those things. Now, this one uh, we, is from Velvet Hamster, so we kind of wrote weird wins. Um, don't underestimate the human mind's desire to make sense of the unexpected. Um, so if you saw this ad of a, uh, I believe that's a hamster, um, together with an onion, uh, don't really know what's going on there, but I kind of want to find out. That's going to make me read the text, and we're going to discover that, oh, Velvet Hamster is a competitor to the onion, the satire site, um, and they're doing something very similar. So. It's, uh, it's quirky, it's weird, definitely grabs people's attention, and um, they're piggybacking off of their larger, better-known competitor, The Onion, and um, that's something that anybody interested in that would be interested in. 
this next one, Green Chef, um, I think there's some important marketing messages we can learn here as well. So regardless of who you're competing against in, in your market, there should be things that you're better at than your larger competitors. So maybe they've got, you know, more product options. Maybe you've got a better price. Maybe you've got better options. Uh, maybe you've got better customer service. Maybe you're a local business that can kind of get to know your customers better. There, there's something that, that makes your product or service superior. Um, and that's the thing that should be highlighted. And so that's what's happening here with Green Chef. You know, I don't know what their pricing is necessarily, but they're highlighting the fact that they have 31 dinner options compared to only 24 on, on Blue Apron. So playing off their competitor, they're saying that they're better, at least within this category, and um, they're not focusing on, on price and all those other things that, that uh, they might not necessarily be the best at. Um, although they might be, don't know. Okay, so numbers and stats, another great way to grab people's attention in ads. So this ad from, from uh, both, actually, I guess that slide is wrong, um, is using the number 190% lift in uh, checkout conversions. So I think many people are more intellectual and number oriented. Um, and so when we see a number like that, it kind of grabs our attention that we want to justify that number and understand that number. Um, not everybody thinks that way, but there's a very large percentage of people that do. And I think it's very much worth testing if that's the case within, within your industry. So the number of the image will often, you know, stop a scroll, get people's attention. They want to understand what did that number represent? Um, and that will hopefully get them to leave the, read the copy. In this case, it is a uh, customer testimonial up above um, and get them to consider your product and, and pay more attention. Because again, our, our goal here is just getting people to stop and consider our product. Uh, this ad from Ezoic um, definitely grabbed my attention. I think I saw it several times in my newsfeed before I took this screenshot. Um, and the curiosity is kind of what the, what's, what's going on here. It's, um, I guess it looks like a cheetah, um, which I guess probably represents speed. Um, but I want to know what that, that 100 represents. You know, it's enough to make me say, hey, you know, what's going on here? Stop, read the copy, and say, okay, this is a site a, a website speed accelerator. And understand that, okay, the cheetah represents, you know, making things go faster. So this would be a really easy ad to emulate. You know, it's pretty simple from a, a graphic design point of view. Um, and A-B testing would be pretty simple also. You could change colors, you could change animals, you could change a lot of things. Um, and would be pretty easy to test as well. Now this Snapchat ad um, grabbed me every time I saw it and had to take this, uh, this screenshot. Um, the big 90% of 13 to 24 year olds that Snapchat ads can reach, um, if that's the demographic that you're going after, then uh, this is definitely something you're gonna pay attention to. Um, so many things that I love about this ad though also, just that, that bright yellow color that pops and grabs my attention, um, the bold, easy to understand stats, and then those fun illustrations. Um, I love it. I love everything about this ad. So now we're going to go into using recognizable logos within your ads and some of the different ways that we can do that. So from this ad from Grammarly, they're highlighting the fact that their product works with Gmail, works with Word, works with Outlook. Um, so people might not necessarily recognize your company's logo, but there's probably businesses that you work with that people will recognize. And you can piggyback off of that recognition to get them to pay attention to your ads. And, and those other logos are kind of what's going to get people to, to stop. Um, you can piggyback off logos of, of clients of yours that you've worked with, press coverage, software integrations, etc. cetera. Um, and sometimes kind of we saw this before with the uh, mail or light ad um, a few moments ago. Uh, you can even use sometimes competitor ads. Just kind of be careful about that. Sometimes uh, we don't want to get into uh, litigation situations. So just be warned. Uh, this ad from Boca also does a great job of using logos. So down below, you can see they've got all those lo those logos from press coverage that they've got. Um, and it ties in really nicely with the copy above, which says, you know, um, the toothbrush everybody's raving about. Presumably, they are talking about coverage they've had in all those magazines, Esquire, GQ, Vogue, etc. And um, that lends validity to their product, together with the fact that many of us will recognize those publications and uh, again, adds, adds validity to the product and the offer. This is an ad we actually created from one of our clients, Buddy. Uh, super simple. All we did is put their logo at the top and then several of the uh, other software platforms that they work together with. Um, and within the developer world that we were going after software developers with this ad, 
Um, these were all very recognizable logos and it did quite well because the, the audience we were targeting recognized all of those, associated them with our client's logo, and uh, ultimately it generated a lot of conversions for them. Now we're going to go on to product demos. So this is actually a video ad, so let me play it for you real quickly. Um, you can see here that within this video ad for Nectar Sleep, it's a, it's a mattress, um, it's actually quite simple. Um, so the demo is showing you how easily this product can just come out of its package, you saw at the beginning of that video, and just pop out of the box. Um, you unroll it, it inflates, and, and there you have it. And, and that helps people understand you know, how the product actually works. And, and it's actually quite simple. You know, that didn't need too much professional production. And, and even if it did, you could probably get something like that to work um, even more simple because people tend to like a behind the scenes look at the company. Uh, it could be quite simple. Um, production matter just doesn't, sorry, production value just doesn't matter that much. Um, people like the authenticity. They like connecting with the company behind the scenes. Um, and sometimes professionally made videos um, can make people trust you a little less. People like the authenticity of something that, that's real nice and simple. So here, here's another product demo video from Shop Smiles by Colgate. It's a teeth whitening product. Um, and you'll see this, this will be a video also I'll show you in just a moment, um, is primarily made up of a compilation of user-generated content um, showing people how they use the product as well as uh, the results people are having from the product afterwards. So here they're going to show you, you know, here's how it works, here's how long it takes, how simple it is to use and stick it in your mouth. You know, I love this. Just the fact that it's usually generated by influencers. Um, it feels nice and easy. We understand it. You do something while you've got this product in. And then you can see how nice your teeth look afterwards. Um, does a great job, like I said, um, demonstrating everything you need to know about this product. Here's actually a product demo uh, using just an image. This is from Lettuce Grow. It's a, a garden product where you, you grow all types of uh, lettuce and produce out of this little stand here. But I think the, the one, two, three image um, helps to show really quick and easy, um, just at a glance, uh, how this product works. You know, without knowing much about this, I can look at this image and I understand exactly what's going on here and I can consider this product if it's something that I'm interested in. Um, so video is great, but if you can communicate things with an image, then it's just happening that much faster because um, at just a glance, you know, of, of a second of viewing this, we understand how beneficial it is and how it works rather than having to maybe, you know, give 10, 15 seconds of attention to a video. And here's one more where we use an image just to kind of understand the product. Um, step one, step two, step three. If you can communicate your product or service in three steps like that um, and communicate it, then that's another great way that we can demo a product essentially just by explaining to people, here are the steps, here's what it does, um, and here's how it works. So now we're going to get into some before and after images. So here we could see a tax service. Um, before using the software, after using the software, happy, sad, um, happy, sad dichotomy is never going to die because, because it works. You know, anyone could look at this and understand the emotions on this woman's face, um, from being, you know, upset about taxes to, to being happy. Um, how anyone's going to be happy about taxes, I don't know, but, um, I guess, uh, that's what this can do. Um, the image communicates so much though. Um, the emotion that comes with this, um, is very easily communicated. And it's enough to kind of get us, if we're interested in, in tax services and tax software, to look up above um, and read the copy and hopefully uh, pique our curiosity enough that we're going to want to click on this ad and go to the website and consider the product. Now this carpet cleaning ad, uh, I really love it. Um, I think just one glance and you can see the benefit um, before and after. So you can see the clean part of the carpet, you can see the dirty part of the carpet. Done. I understand it. Perfect. Um, at that point, if that's something that I need, if I'm interested in having car cleaner carpets like this, I could just, you know, look up above at the copy, there's my price, there's my offer, click on it, let's go sign up to get our carpets cleaned. Here's another one for a uh, lead gen service that I found, you know, then, now, before, after. Um, if you can communicate visually anything like that, here they use the, you know, the pictures of, of the calendars, of what your, your uh, calendar is going to look like when you're trying to book more sales calls. Um, empty calendar, full calendar. Okay, now I understand what this product does and I can imagine what my calendar, what my business would be like if I can keep my calendar that full of sales calls. Um, and for many business owners, that's exactly the situation that they're trying to get to. So those were the 
nine different ads or ad types that I think could run for pretty much any business. Um, now we'll talk briefly about the different principles of ad testing um, in terms of the way that we think about it within our agency. So the, the rule number one is always be testing. We always want to make sure that we have our next winning ads ready before the current ads start to fatigue. So it's just a natural fact to Facebook ads that ads will burn out and, and that'll kind of depend on how quickly you're saturating your target audience. So typically if you've got something that's working and it's profitable, most people will naturally increase their budget. As that happens, you're going to see the frequency of your ads go up. Um, and as frequency gets higher, uh, you start to see a diminishing return on those ads. Um, and the main way that we've found to be able to refresh things is, you know, sometimes you could expand to bigger audiences, but more than not, you know, we're, our, we're targeting the audiences that we know convert well. Um, and we've kind of gone as broad as, as we've found to be profitable for us. But just by refreshing our, our ads frequently, we're able to keep things going a long time. So definitely always be testing new ads within the agency. We make sure that we're testing five to 10 new ad creatives every week for every one of our clients. And uh, most of the time what that actually means is testing the image element of the ad more frequently than the, the ad copy. Um, and the reason for that is, as we discussed before in, in the A3C framework, is that the image is what grabs people's attention for us. And if they don't pay attention to your image, they're not going to read your copy. Um, so we could assume that most people that's, that have been served impressions of our ad have probably not even read that copy yet. So by changing the image, we're just trying again to grab their attention, to get them to read that copy and get consideration. And We've had clients where we've been able to run more than a year of significant budget with the same copy and just changing out images, you know, every week and, and refreshing those whenever necessary. Um, and it's continued to work. Um, the next principle of ad testing is also to be as scientific as possible. Um, and what I mean by that is we test one variable at a time. So if we're going to be testing new images, well, then we want all the ads in our test to be using the same copy, uh, ad copy. And if we're going to be testing ad copy, then we want to make sure that all the ads that we're testing are using the same image and 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 same thing we'd also want to make sure that all the testing is happening with the same audience as well and the reason for that is that we would just simply know within the test that we're only testing one variable at a time so all the differences in terms of the results from that campaign can be attributed to that one variable that we've been that we've been testing within this um, and therefore we're able to agree to achieve a much greater clarity about what's working best and then we combine our, our tests of, of images our tests of text and our tests of audiences take the best ones combine them all together, and then we usually have something that could work really well for us. So that's pretty much what I got for you today. Um, would love to answer your questions, um, although this is not a live webinar, so I guess that's not going to be happening today. But if you have any questions, certainly feel free to uh, send them to me. Uh, you can reach me at aaron at zamodigital.com. Anyways, thank you for watching. I appreciate that you stuck with me for this long, and uh, have a wonderful day.